Hi, I'm Jo from Country Cow Designs. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a laundry bag. So this is a pretty massive bag, but this is a really, really good choice for your first ever sew. Um, and the reason I say that is because it's, it's pretty simple to sew. We're using canvas, which is a non-stretchy material, which makes it easier. And at the end of the day, it's a laundry bag, so it's gonna stay in your house, which means if you do a terrible job and the stitches are all wonky, which on my first project, they definitely were, nobody's ever gonna know. No one's ever gonna see it. It's not leaving the house with you. You and your family are the only ones that will notice. And to be honest, you won't even notice because you'll just be using it. So this is a great, great first sew. This was, I think, one of the first things I ever sewed. Um, perhaps I made a skirt first, which was an absolute disaster. So I know that this is brilliant to start off with. Now for this, I'm gonna be using canvas for the exterior, canvas for the lining. Uh, this is absolutely huge. You don't have to make yours this big. So yeah, you can see it's, it's pretty massive. This holds a lot of laundry. Um, here in Cornwall, we have to clean out all of our recycling, like completely wash it out before we put it out. Um, so I also use one of these for my recycling because I can store a couple of weeks worth of recycling in here and then I only have to go out and put it out when they come to collect. So it's really useful for that too. There's a lot of different uses that I think you could find for this. And if you wanted it to be shorter, to be smaller, you could just cut the panels shorter. So these are all 35 inches long. The measurements for every pattern piece is in the description, but also they'll be on the screen soon. So instead of cutting them all 35 inches, just cut them at 25 or 20 or whatever you want to make this bag smaller. So it's really adaptable. I think that's everything. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, but let me know if you have any questions. Um, just go ahead and comment and I'll try to reply to everybody. And I really hope that you enjoy this video. I know it's not like my normal videos. My normal videos are proper handbags, let's say. Uh, really complicated bag. So this is a really, really simple one for me. I love it. It's quick to sew. It doesn't take any time at all. So I hope you're going to enjoy it too. So the first thing you need to do is cut out all your pattern pieces. So for my lining, I'm using this um, canvasy type material. Whatever you're using for your lining and your exterior, make sure that you wash them before you start on whatever you would normally wash them. So if you normally wash it at 40 degrees, um, make sure you wash them at 40 degrees and tumble dry them if you tumble dry them. Just you want to make sure that you get all the shrinkage out of the fabric because when when you wash your bag later on, which you'll need to do regularly, it it will shrink if you haven't pre-shrunk it. So whatever you're using, just make sure that it's all pre-washed. Now you're going to need your base piece. So this is the lining fabric. Your base piece is 11 inches by 11 inches. And then you need to cut four pieces that are 35 inches by 11 inches. So I'm not going to interface any of my fabric. Um, there is the option if you want to, to add some interfacing. If you're using like a really thin fabric, I would just recommend adding just a small piece of interfacing. This is one inch by 11 inch right at the top of your exterior or lining pieces, just to give it like a little bit more, more firmness around the top, but it's totally optional. And I'm not going to do it in this one because I'm using canvas for both the exterior and the lining. So this is my exterior fabric. And again, I've cut another four pieces at 35 inches by 11 inches. I've got my base, which again is 11 inches by 11 inches. And then I've cut out two handles. So these are 19 inches by six inches each. In addition to that, you are going to need some kind of stabilizer for the base. So I'm using Peltex 71F. You could use Peltex S520 or Decaville Heavy, or you could just use um, like a small piece of plastic matting or something like that. It's just something to give it a bit of firm firmness in the base. And it's gotta be something that's washable. Right, so we'll start with making our handles, which is nice and simple. What you just need to do is draw a line down the center of each handle on the wrong side of the fabric. So your handle is six inches wide in total. So you want to mark it three inches in all the way down the center. Now 
Now I'm just going to take this over to the iron. I'm going to fold these long edges into that centre line and press. So you want to fold both edges in to meet in the centre and make sure that you leave your short ends raw. Okay, so once that's pressed, you then just want to fold it again on that original centre line and give it another press down here to give it a nice crisp edge. And just repeat that so you've got two identical handles. So they're going to be four layers thick and you're not going to have any raw edges on these long edges. So I meant to say about cutting out your fabric. Um, I know that when you're cutting clothes and things, you need to cut on the bias and, and things like that. I don't worry about any of that when I'm using canvas and I'm just making a bag like this. Um, perhaps I should be worried about it, but I've never, ever had a problem with any of my bags like this. And I, yeah, to be honest, I just cut them however, however I like and I go from there. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to top stitch these straps with an eighth of an inch seam allowance and then I'm going to do an extra two rows down the centre as well. So that's what your handles should look like when they're stitched and don't worry about these raw ends because they'll be hidden later on. Now what I meant to say earlier is that when you wash canvas you'll notice that um, it sheds a lot along the edges. Um, it's not quite like washing cotton lycra or something like that if you've um, ever washed something like that. So what I would do is put it inside a net bag before you put it into your washing machine because otherwise when it sheds you're going to end up with a lot of like threads in your washing machine. So normally I just find whatever net bag I can find and um, just tie it, tie it into there before you wash it. So grab your base stabilizer and your lining base. And if you've got fusible stabilizer like me, you can just fuse that on. If you don't have fusible, you can just use a bit of glue or some pins or anything that you like to hold it in place. If you're using pins, make sure you remember to take them out when we're finished. Now, this is a little bit smaller, um, so ideally you want to inset it half an inch from each edge. That just means that the seams aren't going to be really bulky, which will be easier to sew. Now, mine's not perfect, as you can see, but it's close enough. I'm not too bothered. So what you want to do is measure a half inch by half inch box on each corner. And just mark that. So you want to do, do this from the lining base. Ignore the stabiliser when you're doing this. And then you need to trim these squares out. Now grab one of your lining pieces, your main lining pieces. If you have fused interfacing at the top, then make sure you're using the bottom. And what you want to do is match up those bottom edges and just clip that into place. Now what we're going to do is we're going to sew this with a half inch seam allowance, but we're only sewing between the cut out corners. So you're just starting here, finishing there, make sure you backstitch well. So I've sewn those two on and they're right sides together. So if you flip that up now, you've got the right sides of both. What we're going to do is grab a second lining piece and we're going to do the same thing 
put it on the opposite edge. So just match those up. Again, you want them to be right sides together. And again, I'm going to sew with half an inch seam allowance, just from this cutout corner to this cutout corner. And I'm going to back stitch well at the beginning and the end. Now, with a fabric like this, it's not so easy to tell which is the right side. With this fabric, obviously, it's really obvious. This one, got to be honest, there's a, there's a way to tell, but I'm never any good at it. So I am not bothered enough, especially for a recycling bag. <laughs> and both sides look good to me. So I'm just uh, winging it with this one. But if you have a fabric like this one, make sure that you are clipping these right sides together. Okay, so that's my second side attached. So now, when I open this up, we've got two pieces attached to the base. So we're gonna repeat this again with the other two edges. So you want to grab your remaining two lining pieces, clip them right sides together. Now you'll notice here that this one sort of feels like it's in the way a bit. But what you're gonna do is you're only gonna sew between these corners, so it's not actually gonna be a problem. So I'll just clip that together. So I'm gonna sew through that with a half inch seam allowance again from cut out corner to cut out corner. But before I do that, I'm gonna clip the final edge on and do them both at the same time. Those are both clipped on now. If you're having any trouble matching them up because obviously the base piece is slightly shorter on each end, you can just mark the center on this piece and mark the center on your base and then match that up and clip it into place. So I'm going to sew both of these at the same time and then we'll look at assembling the sides. So this is what you should now have with your base. And when you flip this over, all these pieces should be right side up. So we're going to start assembling the sides. What we're going to do is grab two panels that are next to each other. So they're attached next to each other on the base. And you just want to match these up. Again, they're right sides together. And just clip that together at the top and just start working your way down to the bottom. So if you want to use pins instead of clips at any point, that is absolutely fine. I just prefer to use clips personally, so it's just whatever your personal choice is. Now that that is clipped together, we're going to sew all the way up the side with a half inch seam allowance. And down here, we're just going to start where this base seam ends. So it's, we're going to start half an inch in. So start here, back stitch well. And then when you get to the top, you want to finish right, right at the top. Okay, so I've also clipped another side on the same piece because it will save me time if I can do them at the same time. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. I'm going to sew one side and then the other, and then I'll come back and clip the other sides. So when you're sewing this, you're going to need to fold the base in half, sort of like triangles, in order to get that under your machine. So just bear that in mind. It's not a problem if you need to fold it. You can, it will, it will always come back to shape. So don't worry, you can sort of move it around as much as you want. 
Now, when you're sewing fabric like this that isn't interfaced, you'll notice that the fabric on top stretches a little bit and it ends up being a little bit longer. So sometimes they don't quite match at the top by the time you get there. Don't worry about that. We can just trim this down later to match. It's, it's really not a problem. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna clip these two remaining open sides together. So again, we're doing it all right sides together. When you're sewing this, make sure that you start from the bottom and then sew up to the top. That way, if you do get any stretch in your fabric, then it will come out at the top where we can just trim them to match. Otherwise, if you sewed from the top to the bottom, you could end up with a bit of bulgy fabric at the bottom, which you don't want. So finally, I'm going to sew these two final sides together. And as you can see, then we'll have the completed lining. So this will be the inside of the lining. And this is the wrong side of the lining. So that is your lining finished. Now, we want to sort of finish off these seam edges because over time these will probably fray quite badly, although they're going to be hidden inside the bag. Um, with, with a bag that you wash this much, I'd recommend finishing off these seams. So while it's still inside out and you can, sorry, wrong sides out, yeah, and you can still see the seams, you've got two options. The first option is to use some pinking shears like these. Um, now what these do is they cut the edges like that, which stops it from fraying. So this is probably the quickest and easiest way to do it, is just to cut down all of your seams like that, and that should reduce the fraying. Um, but another option, which I think is even better, is to zigzag stitch the seams. So if you want to do this, you'll need to have a sewing machine that has a zigzag stitch, which most domestic machines will do. Some of them will have an overlocker stitch, which is even better, um, but I'm just gonna show you how to use a zigzag stitch. And what you want to do is make sure that the needle is dropping just off the edge with your zigzag. So one will hit it inside the seam and the other one will just off the edge. So hopefully you'll be able to see what I mean when I'm sewing it. And that will again, just pull the seams in and stop them from fraying. So you can see there, I tried to keep the needle off the edge, just off the edge for my zigzag stitch. Sometimes when my seams aren't matching up perfectly, like over here, I just go with the inside seam. Um, so don't worry if it's not absolute perfection. I mean, it is just a laundry bag, so it's, it's not the end of the world. It's not gonna cause a problem, um, but you just want to make sure that you either zigzag stitch or use pinking shears around all of the seams for this lining. So that is your lining completely finished. So set that aside. And now we'll move on to the exterior. So we're going to do the exact same thing as we did before. The difference is we're going to use three eighths of an inch seam allowance instead for this base. So just mark out a square in each corner again, but it needs to be three eighths of an inch instead of half an inch. And go ahead and trim that out on each corner. So the same as with the lining, we're going to place each panel right sides together with the base. 
and then we're going to sew through and again we're just sewing from the cut out corners so you're just sewing between these two points and make sure you back stitch well now this is exactly the same as the lining i'm going to do each piece right sides together with one side of the base until all four are attached So once all of those pieces for your exterior are attached to the base, you're just going to do the same as you did for the lining and join up these side seams and sew them together. Again, we're using three eighths of an inch seam allowance, but when we get to the very top, we want to change to a half inch seam allowance. So what I like to do is just mark it about, about an inch below. And that will just remind me that when I get to this mark, I need to increase my seam allowance to half an inch. So the reason we're increasing it here is just to make sure that the seams match perfectly at the top between the lining and the exterior. So it's just going to be a tiny little bit here where I'm going to increase the seam. So once your exterior is all sewn together, just do the same as you did with your lining and use some pinking shears down all of the seams or alternatively you can do a zigzag stitch. Once your exterior is all finished, you need to fold the top edge over by one inch and give it a press. So you're just going to fold it over like that to the wrong side and press it with an iron around the whole of the top. And whilst you're at it, you want to do the exact same thing with the lining. So you're just going to fold it over toward the side with the seams by one inch and give it a good press. One way to make this slightly easier is to measure and mark two inches down from the top. So I'm going to do that on the other two panels as well. And then what I can do is I can just fold it down to that line and press and then I can be sure that I'm at one inch because I want to have the exterior and the lining equally folded over um, because that will give me a nice neat finish. So this is how it should look on your lining and your exterior. So you can see that both of them are folded over by an inch. Now if you had a bit of stretch going on you might want to just trim this before you before you fold it over and make sure that it's equal all the way around like this so once that's done turn your exterior the right sides out and you want to put your lining into the exterior so you're putting this so that the lining seams are going to be together with the exterior seams so it's one side to go. Now find your seams and match them up. So you want to make sure they're neatly matched up there and just clip them into place. So we're doing what's called a drop in lining. So we're just dropping the lining into the exterior. So the first thing you want to do is match up all four seams and just clip those together. So for two of these panels, you just want to clip them together. So clip one and then you want to clip one that's opposite. So just make sure that the tops are ni nicely lined up. And then find the opposite panel, so that's this one, and clip that into place too. So we're going to put the handles 
into these two sides. So on these two remaining sides, you need to mark for your handles. So what we're going to do is just mark one and a half inches from the side seam in. Just make sure that you're using a pen that you can erase afterwards or use a chalk pen or something. So it's one and a half inches from each side seam there. And grab one of your handles and you want to push it in. You're going to be pushing it in a, about two inches. So I'll just mark two inches on here so I can see. So we want this edge to be lined up with that mark there and the two inch mark to be lined up with the top. And just clip that into place. Just make sure again that you've got a neat join with the lining and the exterior. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'll mark two inches up this handle again. Two inch mark is joining up here and that is my one and a half inch mark in from the seam. That's one handle in. I'm just going to do the exact same thing over here. So again, I'm going to start by marking one and a half inches in from each side seam. Then on your handle, mark two inches up. And you can see there that the edge of the handle is lined up with that mark. Now, when you're doing this, make sure that your handle isn't twisted. So that's all ready now for top stitching. Now, when you're top stitching, you want to do two rows of top stitching, first with an eighth of an inch seam allowance, then with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then lastly, we're just going to sew the handles into place just for a little bit of extra support. When you're top stitching, if you've got a domestic sewing machine, you can pull the table off your sewing machine and then you can place this onto your sewing machine and sew it around. It's a much easier way to top stitch. Alternatively, if you can't take the bed off your machine, it's easiest normally to sew from the inside. So just give it a, give it a go on your machine, try a different, few different ways and just see what works for you. So a couple of things about top stitching. Check your bobbin before you start because otherwise you're just going to be sewing with air like I was. Um, also, if you have slightly sort of wobbly stitching like mine, it can often be because your needle is blunt and needs changing, which is the case for mine and I really should have changed it out before I started. So just some of the stitches are just a little bit wobbly and this always happens to me when I've got an old needle which has been in there for quite some time. Um, another thing that you can do if you want to make it a little bit easier to get over these seams is make sure that 
the lining seam is facing one way and the exterior seam is facing the other. That will flatten it out a bit. And if you want to, you can use a hump jumper to get over that little bit of bulk there. But because we haven't got loads of interfacing and things like that, it's, it's really not too bad. So the last thing we're gonna do, other than removing all these little stray threads, is just to sew the handles in. So just here, I'm gonna mark it out with my pen just to make it easier for myself. So you can feel the strap through there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark, a, sew a big box, and then I'm gonna do an X across it as well. I'm gonna do the same thing on all four handles, and I'm gonna try and do it a quarter of an inch in from where I've marked, from where the handle is. So I'm gonna be sewing through the exterior, the handle and the lining. Now, when you're doing your top stitching, you ideally want to have a nice long stitch length. I normally use a four millimeter, which is the longest that my machine does. But when I'm doing this, I'm gonna go back down to about a three or a two and a half, because this is for strength. So although I want it to look nice and the longer stitches look good, um, I really want this to be reinforced because this could end up with quite a lot of weight in it. that should be your handles all sewn on. Now it can be a little bit of a faff doing it this way, it might feel like it's easier to do it before the bag is assembled, but by sewing through all the layers it just ensures that you get loads of strength in there, it's just a really nice strong hold. So just spend a bit of time getting rid of all your loose threads, um, poking out your bottom corners and making sure that your lining is sitting nicely inside there. And that is your finished bag. So don't worry about it if it's not absolutely perfect, if your seams aren't great, that sort of thing. This is a laundry bag. It really isn't going to be a problem at all. It's just a really nice thing that it'll glam up, glam up your laundry room or wherever you're using it. Maybe if you're using it in a bedroom, it just, it brings a bit of colour in. But at the end of the day, you're never going to look at it long enough to notice these tiny little things, these tiny little stitching errors that you've done. What's important is that it holds together and it is just a brilliant way to practice a few new skills. And if you're new to sewing, just really get you into bag making and a little bit of an understanding of how bags are made. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you've got any questions, just let me know in the comments below um, and subscribe if you want to know about any other free tutorials or patterns that I've got coming out soon.